And tonight, Ghana stings Nigeria to book tickets to Qatar 2022 World Cup. We'll bring you reactions of this crucial match. Also in this package, minority to challenge the legitimacy of the passage of the controversial E-Levy bill, describing the process as a charade. We don't support Ilipi. We will not support Ilipi. Count us out of it. They can proceed with whatever business they want to do. I thank you. But the majority insists there was nothing procedurally untoward with the decision. Uh, is there any, any issue about quorum? I'm not sure that uh, quorum was uh, an issue. There was quorum. Also in this package, Asin North MP files a fresh application to effectively block the Apex Court from hearing a case that is seeking to stop him from performing parliamentary duties. Mr. Chikata on Tuesday informed the court of a new application he had filed. This was urging the court to permit him to file additional documents in support of his review motion. And at 8 p.m., Charles will come your way with business. Charles, what should we expect as Ghana? Has qualified. Indeed, Ghana has been qualified. Good news for us. But in business, the passage of the electronic bill, an economist is saying that it could come with some challenges as some Ghanaians may now opt for bank checks. Using check for payment comes at zero cost. So mm -hmm. it is possible that some individuals or tax sensitive or e levy sensitive consumers of financial services may want to explore the channel of using check payment. And at 8.30 p.m., we'll bring you Prime Sports with Oreku. Oreku, we've booked our ticket. <laughs> yes, we have. And when I say something, you guys say check. So, Jalof, check. check. Music, check. And now, football, check. check. So, <laughs> Ghana has defeated Nigeria finally, finally. in all <laughs> aspects. And Ghana would be in Qatar. We'll bring you live reactions Definitely. live from our Abuja. Right. Definitely, you want to stay with us. This is your home of independent, fearless, and credible journalism. The excitement is too wild, even from the back room. Please stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. This is John News Prime. And of course, Ghana has booked its ticket to Qatar 2022. We'll bring you reactions shortly. But let's start from Parliament. The minority has served notice it will challenge the legitimacy of the passage of the Electronic Transaction Bill. Now, Parliament uh, passed the controversial bill today uh, after the consideration uh, stage was a complete one-sided uh, you know game the minority leader Harun Idrisu had earlier accused the majority of smuggling it into the other paper and according to him the e-levy was not captured in the business statement for the week and he questioned why the majority will pull a surprise on the NDC despite the appeal for some more time to study the report the speaker proceeded to hear the debate I want to thank you for the opportunity and to ask you to ask President Nana Dudankwa Akufuadu to withdraw this punitive, regressive, insensitive tax and that we do not support it and you don't need any vehicle for Chop Chop to go and collect e -Levy. So Mr. Speaker, this side, we don't support e -Levy. We will not support e -Levy. Count us out of it. They can proceed with whatever business they want to do. I thank you, sir. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Put the pressure. Put the pressure. Put the pressure. Put the pressure. Mr. Speaker, put the pressure. Mr. Speaker, put the pressure. My colleagues are in the chamber. Mr. Speaker, my colleagues are in the chamber. I invite you to put the question now. Put the question now. They are in the chamber. Put the question now. They are in the chamber. Put the question now. Mr. Speaker, I'm inviting you. Put the question now. They are in the chamber. Out, 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 out! Am I, honorable majority leader, 
am I to understand that you are forgoing your salvation? Yes, yes. 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 yes, and what you are here, yes. put a yes. yes. All right. Yes. Honorable members, the majority leader has adopted what has already been submitted, and so I proceed to put the question. Those in favor of the adoption of the report of the committee in support of the second reading of the Electronic Transaction Levy Bill 2021, say aye. Those against, say no. members the eyes have it and we'll bring you more from today's proceedings in Parliament. But the top story right now is that Ghana has booked its place in the uh, World Cup in Qatar 2022. Let's cross over now to the Sadisco traffic light where my colleague Latifi Dries is there, uh, gauging the mood of Ghanaians, speaking to them uh, following our qualification. Latif, what can you report from where you are? <laughs> Ellis, can you hear me? I can hear you, Latif. Go ahead. Uh, tell us how people are reacting uh, to, to this victory. Yeah, yeah, Ellis. So we are at the. Uh, we are just at the Sadisco traffic light. I just in the Sadisco traffic light. And the jubilation here is unimaginable. So Nigeria can be bigger in landmark, bigger in population size, maybe bigger in the economy. But when it comes to football, Ghana has today once again proven to be bigger when it comes to football and comparing Ghana to Nigeria. The jubilation is unimaginable. And we just want to engage uh, the owners of this shop. Then we move out there. Then we get to get a clear understanding of how the jubilation is on the street. Yes. Let me start with you. I was speaking with you earlier, and yeah. I asked you about your expectation going into this game. When we played in Kumasi, yeah. everybody expected Ghana was going to win. That didn't happen. Yeah. What was your expectation going to Abuja? As I in said earlier on, although everybody was expecting Ghana to win, the boys showed great determination. They, they, were, they looked very hungry. I saw that in them. So when we, were, we came to Nigeria, I said, no, definitely we are going to win this match. And also the coach, Otto Ado, I think he's a good strategist and he's a good coach for the Blasters for the future. All right, thank you very much. Uh, let's come to you briefly. You, you give us your name. My name is Banga, Banga, Banga. Uh, what's the feeling like right now? The feeling is something I cannot describe. It's exceptional. It's unprecedented. I cannot describe the feeling right now. So please ask the question. My brother. Like I asked him, what was your expectation going into this game in Nigeria? I knew there's no way we are going to lose. In, in, in this game, eh, you must be tactical. Because goalers draw, or buying draw, or a scoring draw, we are in. So the co our coach was very tactical. He said, listen, we know who we are going to play against. Let's adopt strategy. Don't forget, the Nigerians are players, but there wasn't any teamwork. We went there with a teamwork. That shows our bench were technically better than the Nigerians. They only mention names. Names don't play ball. You need to form a team before you get a win. That's why we are there. We are in Qatar. Bye bye. All right, thank you very much. My brother, first of all, talk to me. My brother, you, you give us your name. My name is Baba Abubakari Adam. Baba, t tell us, how excited are you right now? My brother, more than the word excitement. But I want to tell my Nigerian brothers, you see what happened? Ghanaians, if we don't have teeth, but it is not biscuit. I am telling you, and football to Nigerian brothers, football is played with 11 players, not 200 million. <laughs> you see, before even the game at Kumasi, the game was already predicted. My brother, there is no way Nigeria will qualify in the aspect of the whole Ghana. A football nation like Ghana. Turn up, turn up, we are placed turn up, with quality, turn up, turn up. natural talent. We don't have to force it. Nice one. All we need, patient, calm and confident. And we are there. Come on, man. Come My on, brother, man. Come on, man. Qatar, they've already given us our slot. Nice. And we are there already. Nice. So what do you expect? Do you expect any changes in the team? Are there areas that you think Otoado would have to work on if indeed now we are going to compete 
at the world stage. Do you see any deficiencies within the setup that needs to be worked on going forward? Obviously, obviously. You know, they are not perfect. They've done well. But there's a room, you know, for improvement. So what we are doing, what we are going to, you know, the advice we are giving to the technical men is that they should make sure that they should improve this team before we go to Qatar. Because we have a lot of low posts. We have a lot of, you know, areas of problems. They should make sure that we solve that problem before we go forward. I knew Ghana, when we step our foot in Qatar, Ghana will go places. Are we going to win the World Cup? No yet, but I think we can make it to the semi-final. Come on, Ghana! <laughs> now, now, let's step outside and then get a... Uh, okay, the place is deserted now. We had a lot of people here who were chanting and jubilating. And now the whole place is deserted. But there are others who are still, I mean, watching. You, you would find them on the other side of the, across the streets. Uh, they've still not had enough of the game, watching the highlights. And so that is the situation. Maybe we can have a bit of analysis on the ground. We have a Joy Sports rep here. Uh, we will do a bit of analysis before we hand over to you back in Studio Ernest. Tell us about what you make about the general performance of the team throughout the 90 minutes. So if you look at the game, you could tell that the Ghanaians were really hungry for this win. They knew that um, if they are not able to get a win at least, a draw, a score, a draw with a scoreline can get them something. So 1-1, one, 2-2 one, two, two would definitely get them into the World Cup in Qatar. Now, if you look at the second half, we, have, we needed that change. We needed that um, switch tactically because it looked like the Nigerians had found out what we were trying to do in the first half, which is why they created a lot of chances in the first half. So the second half changing to their wing backs, trying to block what the Nigerians are doing through the, the flanks really helped us and it gave us the opportunity to defend more and also push attacking wise. And that's what we saw. Going forward, have you identified with your technical eye any deficiencies within the setup that needs to be worked on? Now we are going to the, the highest level of football, the World Cup. Are there areas Otuado has to work on before we go to, to Qatar? Okay, so there are two main areas I, I find very key. First is our build-up, because it looks like Otuado prefers to play from the back. So if he's building up play, he needs the kind of players that are very comfortable with the ball on their feet. And we saw that with Idris Baba, he really struggled, especially in this game, the first half. They noticed that in the first leg in Ghana, they were able to close him down and therefore making it difficult for him to move those balls. So this second half, you could see, I mean, sorry, in this game, Pierre uh, played in Abuja. This is the second half. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah in, the, in the game played in Abuja, the second leg, you could see that Idris Baba wasn't able to move the ball quite swiftly and, 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 and it really impeded what the Black Stars were trying to do. So taking him out, bringing in Elisha Usu and others, it really opened up that play for us to play that kind of ball also. But then we, we began to play the ball longer, which also helped us, preventing the Nigerians from pressing us more. That's one area. A second area I find very key is our attack. Because if you notice, we struggle with goals. This game, the person who scored was Thomas Partey. He is not a striker. If you look at the other games, the DRU has been very promising in the attacking areas. He's been the one getting us the goals. So you find that kind of problem for the Ghana Black Stars, and we, we really need to work on that department. It's good Afenajan is in for the squad, but then he's still a talent that needs to be, um, how do I put it? He needs finishing. He needs that touch to be able to um, bring out the talents that he has and make him a finished product. So it will take time. We need, we need this technical team to, to put everything they have together. I, I like the, the, the way they've assembled themselves and, and coached as a unit. We need more of that to help the team as a unit and also push them into, into Qatar. So the man who stood in between the sticks, Wolokot, yeah. how would you rate his performance today? Today I'll give Wolokot a solid 8. If, 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 I, I could even give him a 10 because we were able to get the results we needed. So. Um, Molokot, you could see from his saves, very crucial, very important. As you say, the, the, the set piece one where he was able to block it, that was very, very important. Exactly. That's what you need from your goalkeeper. He, he, we, I'm really proud as a Ghanaian seeing what he could do. I mean, it's, he's playing for Swindon Town, a team that may not be rated by many. He's proved that he can actually coach on a national level, and that tells a lot. So I, I'm really proud of his performance, and I'm hoping to see more in the future. If we're able to address some of the issues that you've raised, the midfield, the build-up, the speed with the build-up and all of that. Where do you see Ghana going in Qatar? Are we going to win the World Cup? That will be a rush. Let's, let's take it one step at a time. But I believe... Um, it's, it's How far can we go then? We've been able to reach the quarter-finals before. Let's, let's not forget that. But that was a different team. 
what would work for us is our, our, our chemistry and also the players we look to bring in. Let's not forget that the team that went to the World Cup at 2010-2006 that performed very, very well, these two World Cups, they all had that chemistry within them. They all had that um, hunger and drive for excellence and that's very crucial. If we are looking to get that, we need the hunger and mentality and we also need to recruit good players into our midst. I mean, you need that drive of, of um, high quality players to, to play at a certain standard. Now, if you have that and you're playing with the quality and chemistry, it, it, it gives you that high ranking for you to get to the likes of round of 16 and quarter final. So hopefully we are able to get to that stage. Right. So <laughs> that's your Joy Sports, yours truly from Joy Sports. And earlier we had a lot of Nigerians parading the street. They were watching the game together with their Ghanaian counterparts. Now you can't find a single Nigerian on the street. They've all vanished into thin air. Uh, so that is the situation. Nigeria, you are big in size. The landmark, you are bigger. When it comes to population-wise, you are bigger. Uh, when it comes to economy, you may be bigger. But when it comes to football, Ghana has today, once again, proven that we are bigger than you. Aki, thank you very much. And from they may have here. bringing us uh, that update from Nigeria. Joy Sports is there uh, at 8.30 p.m. when Oreku joins us. We'll bring you uh, a live feed from there. We'll speak to uh, George Ardo Jr., who brought us live commentary on Joy 99.7 FM. We'll be speaking to uh, some of our compatriots who are there in Nigeria, some of whom were at the stadium to support the Black Stars. But right now, let's return to Parliament. The minority, after that, uh, the passage of the E-Levy at a news conference, express regret at what they say is the refusal of the House to comply with the latest Supreme Court decision on form, forming a quorum uh, for decision-making. Harun Ejisu hinted a stay of execution has already been filed as the first step to challenge the passage in court. I want to thank you for the opportunity and to ask you to ask President Nana Adudankwa Akufuadu to withdraw this punitive, regressive, insensitive tax and that we do not support it and you don't need any vehicle for Chop Chop to go and collect e-levy. So Mr. Speaker, this side, we don't support e-levy. We will not support e-levy. Count us out of it. They can proceed with whatever business they want to do. I thank you, sir. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. The majority leader of Sir Chay Mensah Bonsu said there was nothing unconstitutional about the process today. He also spoke at a news conference. As soon as practicable, um, you, you heard the speaker speak to. Usually when bills are passed by parliament, we go through to ensure that the comments, the I's and the T's have been crossed and so on and so forth. I guess we can spend tomorrow, today because of the match, I'm not sure uh, that that small committee can meet. And maybe after the president's address tomorrow, a space would be found for it to be done. So I guess by the close of the week, it will be ready for the president's assent. Quorum. Uh, is there any, any issue about quorum? I'm not sure that uh, quorum was... Uh, an issue. There was quorum. Uh, Parker, certificate of agency. And uh, you're asking whether the consideration was still on the lines of um, a certificate of agency. And certainly so. That is how come the procedural motions were, were, were stood down. Because the cost has been determined by the committee, the relevant committee, right, that um, the bill is of an urgent nature. Um, the, the 
relevant provisions shall have to be stood down. The other day, there was this squabbling about uh, procedural motions, and I was telling them that it was not required. Once the committee makes the determination, um, and perhaps it would be relevant for me to read the appropriate... Yes. Article 106 of the Constitution plus 13 provides where it is determined by a committee of parliament appointed for the purpose that a particular bill is of an urgent nature. The provisions of the preceding clauses of this article other than clause 1 and paragraph A of clause 2 shall not apply and accordingly the president shall give his assent to the bill on his presentation for assent. So let's do some more on this. Uh, we're joined by Kofi J, uh, who is with our research desk, uh, to bring us some more detail on this. Uh, once the e-levy was announced, there was some uh, it influenced the way people transact uh, of our mobile money. And of course, if nothing changes, it means that you and I would have to pay for those transactions. Uh, Kofi J has been gathering some data on that, plus the uh, projections on what you would really have to pay if this comes into effect. Kofi, uh, first let's start mm. from what the transaction has yeah. been. So let's start with active mobile money accounts. We've been tracking this since 2018 mm. to January 2022. So you could see the trend Okay. From 14.5 um, million people in 2019 active, you know, um, accounts to 17.1, and then you could see that from December 2021 there was a decline from 17.9, you know, million people active who were actively using mobile money to 17.4 um, 17 as of January um, um, 2022. Mm. Now, if you move to the next slide, it gives you the value of transaction. So the first one we looked at was active accounts. accounts okay. So now we are looking at the, the value of the transaction. Mm. So you could see an upward trend mm. from 22.6 um, billion, okay. you know, in 2018, climbed up to 67.7 billion Ghana cities in 2022 as of December. And um, as of 2021 December, it was 82.9 billion uh, cities worth of um, uh, Momo transactions. And now you can see that there's a decline in terms of the value of transaction as well. Okay. From 82.9 billion CDs to 76.2 billion and CDs. And that's just about a month exactly. you know, difference. That mm -hmm. is quite huge. Yeah. So you can see that there's a drop. Now the next slide shows you an interesting trend. So let's look at that one. This is um, active mobile money um, you know, account. Okay. So we, we, we just restricted this from 2021 January to this year, January. So what, what has been the trend? Okay. You could see a cyclical movement. So we started from 18.3 million people as of January um, 2021, you know, 18.3 million people. You could see it drop sharply to 17.3 as of January, uh, July um, 2021. And then, and then it, exactly, a significant rise to 19.1 million people, active accounts, and then again to 19.4 million people in September 2021. Now, just look at this. Right after the month where the budget was read, that was November 2021, you could mm. see a consistent decline in okay. terms of the active number of mobile money accounts from 18 million in November 2021 to 17.9 million in December um, um, 2021, then a sharp de a decline to 17.4 million mm. as of January this year. So I you see. could see a downward trend you know, when it comes to, when it comes to you know, the, the, the active, the active mobile money accounts, right from the time where the e-levy was um, announced in the 2022 budget. And we've also been tracking the value of transactions. Okay. The value of transactions is also seeing the same cyclical, you know, movement. So you could see as of um, January 2021, where the value of transaction was amounting to some 89.1 billion Ghana CDs. A sharp, um, you know, increase to 99.9 .9 billion Ghana cities. That was really significant, you know. Mm -hmm. And then you could see a very a sharp Even decline, drop. exactly, from 99.9 .9 billion Ghana cities to just 17.7, 71.7 billion Ghana cities as of September. Mm -hmm. Now you could see it started doing well from September, October, then November when the budget was announced. 
a decline again in terms of the value of transaction from 86.1 billion to so now 76.2 uh, 76. uh, billion. Mm -hmm. So we've also been doing some permutations as okay. far as you know, the e-levy is concerned. Okay. So assuming that we are taxing the value added, it means that if you are transacting an amount of 100 CDs, it's exempted. And then if you transact an amount of 200 CDs, the value added will be 100 CDs. So let's look at the permutation. So assuming that e-levy is 1.5, uh, just what well, they've, they've passed, 1.5% and telcos decide to still keep their 1% uh, service charge. Let's look at if you are transacting an amount of, let's say, 500 CDs. Here, the value added will be 400 CDs, meaning that the telcos will now charge you the same uh, 5 CDs they used to charge. Okay. And E-Levy will charge you 6 CDs, plus will give you 12 CDs, 50 pesos. So it means that the total cost in terms of everything will be um, 512 cities, 50 pesos. Okay. That is taxing the value added. Let's assume you are also transacting an amount of 1,000 cities. At the moment, 1,000 cities and above comes at a fixed charge of 10 cities. Oh, 10 cities, yes. So let's say telcos are still charging 10 cities, and e levy will charge you 13 cities, 50 pesos. Mm. Together will be. And, and by the way, let's just say that the revised levy, uh, the revised rate is now 1.5. 1. 1. Exactly. Not the initial 1.75. So we are five, still yes. doing that 1.5 permutation. Okay. So let's go to the next slide. That's one also. Let's assume that e levy has been passed, you know, at 1.5%. And telcos have agreed to reduce their charge now. To, to 0 0.75. To 0 0.75. And we are using this because we had the finance minister exactly. say that they had exactly. agreed to do so. Exactly. So it is very important to consider this permutation as mm. well. So in this case, if you are transacting an amount of 100 CDs, no charge, you know, you're exempted, but you still pay the telco's charge, you know, of zero, uh, you know, uh, 75 pesos. So let's assume you are transacting an amount of 200 CDs, meaning the value added here will be 100 CDs. 100 CDs. Exactly. So E-Level will come in. Okay. The charge will be one city fifty pesos plus, you know, um, the telco charge will be one city fifty pesos plus e levy one city fifty pesos together giving you three CDs. That's the transaction cost. Total will be two hundred and three CDs. Mm -hmm. The same thing if you are, you know, sending an amount of um, five hundred CDs, the telco charge will now reduce from the initial one we saw from five CDs to three CDs seventy five pesos. E levy will still be constant here at six CDs together will give you nine CDs seventy five pesos giving you a total cost of 509 cities, 75 pesos. So this, that's a various uh, mm. permutation that we've been looking at okay. as far as the E-Levy is concerned. Kofi, well, thank you very much, as yeah. always. Uh, now you know what you are going to pay if this really kicks in. But let's return to the uh, legal issues. Did Parliament really err in its processes today in view of the latest Supreme Court uh, ruling? Uh, let's speak to a private legal practitioner. Uh, Osman Al Hassan joins us uh, via Zoom with some uh, legal opinion on this issue. Thank you very much sir, for your time here on Join News Prime. You have followed the proceedings today. Uh, what is your take on what transpired? Well, <clears throat> I have always said that there is a conundrum that hasn't been resolved, and it is one conundrum upon the other. Now, you can see that. They are threatening to challenge the passage of the bill. It is because of quorum. Now, we know that some of the members of parliament on the other side, on the government side, were not in the house. And so even if they were all in the house, it means they were supposed to be 137 plus the speaker. Now. Even if they were 137, it is not yet half of all the members of parliament. And if we take that to be enough a quorum, then it means it will revert us back to the quorum that rejected the budget. Mm. You would find that the quorum that rejected the budget was 137 membership. And they said because it was 137, it was not up to half of all the members of parliament. And so the budget was not duly rejected. And that brought us back to all the confusions that happened. And we resulted in a second uh, 
section of parliament that approved it. So my point is that if there was no quorum as declared by the Supreme Court, then it means the passage of the bill was illegal, is unconstitutional. Mm. And for me, the clarity would have been there if the Supreme Court had decided on Richard Sky and the Attorney General. It is Richard Sky on the Attorney General that would have brought much more clarity to this. Mm. But the Supreme Court seemed to say that in that case, it is moot because of the decision that they have taken yeah. in Abdullah and Attorney General, Attorney General, which means that once they have upheld the approval of the budget in Abdullah, they are by that saying that the first rejection is also invalid. Mm. Otherwise, we have to go to the Supreme Court for clarification. Mm. What does it mean for them to say that the questions raised by Richard Sky in his case are moot? And in law, when we say they are moot, it means they are dead. It means they are no longer relevant for determination, which means that they have already been decided in the other case. Mm. And if that is the case, if that is the case, it means they are saying that the rejection of the bud budget was invalid and its approval was valid. Mm. And the reasons find their ways into this particular session of parliament, which has also decided on the passage of the e-levy. So it is one conundrum upon the other. I think the Supreme Court should de make a declaration, a definite declaration on this. Mm. Well, we yes. seem to have a challenge with your line there, but you, you're talking about going back to the Supreme Court, and Justice Abdullahi had hinted uh, of a review. Now, will this affect his chances in any way, and how do you see it? Now, the review, the Justice Abdullahi's case is about the validity of the approval of the budget in terms of quorum. Yeah. Now, but the whether the, the approval was valid, it doesn't answer the question whether the rejection was valid. Okay. Because you can have two valid decisions standing. But it appears that the Supreme Court has held the view that once they have held this one as valid, it automatically means that this one is invalid. And so they said the question and Richard Sky and Attorney General is moot. But if that is the case. If Abdullah is going for a review, the review, if the review comes out with a, with a, with a lack of quorum in the approval of the budget, that, does, that, that will mean that in this particular uh, passage of the e-levy, there was no quorum as well. Because if the Supreme Court says there was no quorum in Justice Abdullah because the decision is reviewed, and remember, if the decision is reviewed, it means that they are taking out the deputy speaker as part of the quorum. And if he's out of the quorum, they are 137. Mm -hmm. And if they are 137, it means they are less of a quorum. And if they are less of a quorum, then they, the budget it was not approved. Indeed. So, and if this is held, it will also mean that this, the passage of the bill is invalid mm. but if they, they they still come to the conclusion that even if the speaker was not part of the quorum the 137 is qualified as qualifies as a quorum then it means the rejection of the budget was also valid and so we have these conundrums to yeah. deal with yeah and, and, that's and why the, the I minority said, had hinted mm -hmm. they are going to challenge this in court uh, but do you think there will be the need to go again in a separate matter before the Supreme Court, uh, you know, in a, in a case that would bring some more clarity uh, to these issues that, that you raise? Yes, the, the issues are different because this time they are going to challenge the passage of a bill. Yeah. And though the grounds may be the same, it, the, 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 the questions are not the same. This time they are going to question the validity of the e-levy. That is, and they can even do so after, even if the president has given his consent to it and it becomes law. 
You can challenge it as an unconstitutional law because the passage of it did not get a quorum. Mm. Well, they have hinted that uh, they will boils... be seeking a stay of execution. So we'll see how that pans out. Uh, and I'm grateful for your time. We ran out of uh, time on this. But just before you go, uh, were you hopeful anyway. that we're going to book our, our place in the World Cup? Thanks for staying with us here on Join News Prime. Now, the Supreme Court has set April 5, 2022, to deliver its ruling on an application filed by the Asin North MP, James Jachikwesen. This is an application urging the Apex Court to set aside its March 8 ruling that ordered the legislator to file his defense in a case seeking to stop him from performing parliamentary duties. Court correspondent Joseph Akable has the rest of the story. The court on March 8 noted that the case against the MP had been sufficiently brought to its attention. It had on February 22 directed that court process to be brought to the attention of the MP through a publication in a daily graphic newspaper and posting on the wall of the Supreme Court in Accra, the High Court in Cape Coast and the residence of the MP. This was after the private citizen who filed the case against the MP, Michael Ankoma Nimfa, had through his lawyers told the court all attempts to give the MP court documents had proved unsuccessful. His lawyers, led by Judge Shikata, informed the court that its order for substituted service had not been fully complied with. He said the publication the Daily Graphic did not contain all court processes but simply had the order of the court and dates for hearing. Lawyer for Mr. Nimfa Frank Davis told the court a misunderstanding of its order in respect of the Daily Graphic publication does not mean the MP is not aware of court processes. He explained that the other modes of service have been complied with. The court, by a unanimous decision, dismissed the objection raised by Mr. Chikata. Mr. Chikata on Tuesday informed the court of a new application he had filed. This was urging the court to permit him to file additional documents in support of his review motion. This was granted by the court. He then made another request asking the court for time to study documents that had been filed in opposition to his review application. This was not granted by the court. He then moved his review application. He urged the court to set aside its March 8 ruling, saying it sinned against its time-tested rulings on similar matters. Lawyer for Michael and Command Infa Frank Davis opposed the application. He insisted Mr. Chikata had failed to show how the decision of the court resulted in a miscarriage of justice to merit a review of that decision. The court adjourned proceedings to April 5 to deliver its ruling. The case is being heard by Justices Jones Doche, Agnes Doji, Nena Megacha, Professor Ashikote, Mariama Owusu, Getru Tokonu, Clemens Honyenuga, Professor Enrita Mensa Bonsu, and Emmanuel Yoni Kolendi. Professor Ashikote and Justice Clemens Honyenuga are the two judges that have joined the original seven member panel for this review. Now, this story will bring smiles to your face and restore your dying hope. For 30 years, a couple tried to conceive after they had their first child but failed. The couple, 62-year-old Ethel and 66-year-old Daniel, lost hope of nursing another child. But as fate would have it, the over 60-year-old couple are currently nursing their four-month-old triplets. Yes, triplets. It was an ecstatic atmosphere when the couple, together with members of the Ebenezer Assemblies of God Church at Kotobabi, danced their hearts out for what is a miracle. Mausi Numon joined them at the dedication service and our reports. <laughs> Like Abraham and Sarah in the Bible, the waiting period for Daniel and Ethel was fraught with frustrations and stigma. You know women, some gossip about me. Oh, it was very this is horrifying. Very troublesome. Because always you have to be, you, you will be disturbed. Why not have another child after the first child? But today, their joy has been made complete as they hold their most adorable treasures, Alexander, Alexandra, and Alexina. These triplets came in on the 29th of November, 2021. So we were, we were very gratified that the Lord has done for that we have been asking all these years. We always thank you to the Lord for what he has done for us. For Ethel, who had to try many fertility treatments, 
The arrival of the triplets has boosted her trust and confidence in God. I hope to have many, but I couldn't make it. I always keep on praying for Almighty God and I have faith and belief within me that I will surely have a baby. And because of that, even her childhood dresses, I've never thrown single away. During 40, 45, I started going treatments. But there is no result and I stop. But always I wish I will get some. That is my wish. The firstborn of the couple, 30-year-old Daniela, is excited to play the big sister role, a task she cherishes dearly. I must say I closed my mind on that because it's been so many years. So, yeah, but you know, you can't stop God from doing what he's good at doing. It's been amazing right from the time they were birthed, seeing them alone. It's been, it's been joyful. These are my siblings we are talking about, so I can't um, be relying on somebody to do that. For Daniel and Ethel, seeing an important... This is Johnny Spine with me on Estimating.